I'm here primarily because of the work that uh, uh, me and my team for, have been doing for the last, uh, I would say, seven years on closed loop manufacturing systems, which we now call circular manufacturing systems. And the, the work that uh, has been done in the past four years uh, on a relatively more advanced level is basically with the support from European funding, and that's called the Project RESCOM. And that's where we have been, you know, uh, as KTH, we have been leading that, uh, that project for the last four years. Uh, this work, of course, has resulted in a lot of new uh, developments with methodologies and tools for, let's say, developing the circular systems. Also with the, some PhD graduations and definitely uh, publications as well. But today's presentation that, uh, that we'll, uh, I, I will do now will be very much at the, at the generic level uh, or a higher level for the, for the uh, understanding of wider or larger audience. So my question here is that the circular economy, which is a rising paradigm, uh, is it a befitting paradigm for a sustainable future? Would it be useful, helpful, essential? So that's what I will basically go through today uh, for, for understanding. Well, <clears throat> just to understand the background and, and why, for example, we see the rise of this paradigm, uh, let's have a quick look at the at some some data. Uh, well, we all know how, for example, the the world population has been increasing, and uh, we have seen the increase uh, constant in the past hundred years, or let's say maybe if we can go back or as well. But in the past fifty years, we have seen this population almost doubling. All right, and that's really something that we need to. Uh, worry about. Uh, then the going forward, for example, with this rise in population, we also see that if we look at the look at the overall, uh, let's say, prosperity of the people in the in the uh, around the globe. So just looking at this one from the 1998 and moving forward, for example, to this one. So just have a quick look on this. You know, what we see is basically this hump of you know population is moving more towards the the higher income levels so that means that it's not just the population it's actually the prosperity at the same time that is increasing so that would mean of course that we need more resources to basically fulfill the pros prosperity needs of these people because they are looking for higher levels of standards living standards and well, I mean, with this prosperity, uh, we see that there is a mindset that is evolving as well. And that's what we usually today call consumerism, right? Now, one outcome of the consumerism is actually, well, it is basically just fitting the, 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 those, those data. And we see a constant increase in the, in the resource usage as well, right? So, I mean... Uh, we, we, it's almost like uh, following the population curve and also the prosperity curve. So in the past 50 years, we see actually the resource consumption going more than double, right? And, well, the question then we should ask ourselves is that, well, is it possible that we continue with this? Well, probably not, because what we are doing out of this uh, paradigm is actually... Uh, we are using a lot more resources, which is constantly, uh, the, the, the usage is increasing constantly, and then a direct reflection of consumeristic society is basically one of these wastes. Well, there are several waste streams that we have created over the past uh, 100 years in our industrial revolution. But these uh, electronic waste, for example, is becoming one of the big problems. So it's one of the indicators as well that for example, in 2014, study shows that 42 million tons of waste we are creating has the potentially, I mean, if the resource is about $52 billion if we could, could reuse that. Uh, and uh, the more worrying part is basically the, the growth rate every year. And of course, I mean, we, we agree that this will not, uh, this cannot continue like that. And what is happening here I, I would say that is the 
result of this take, make and dispose model that actually has come uh, as part of our industrial revolution. Right? And uh, what we do in this model is basically just thinking about, I mean, the model is based on the notion that we have infinite resources, right? Uh, which obviously is becoming more and more clear that it's, it's not the case. And what we do is basically we add value, we use the value, and then we just put it in the waste bin. And, well, so far, uh, the, the best strategy that we have practiced, I mean, to, to take care of this is basically the waste management. Waste management on its own is a paradigm, right? So what this whole thing is known as basically the linear paradigm. Now, linear paradigm is not really, this is, there is a consensus, of course, that the linear paradigm is not the way forward, right? But do we have an alternative? Well, the alternative being presented is actually what we call the circular economy, right? Now, it's a little bit more technical here. I will explain it in, in, in simpler words. But understanding, well, looking beyond this take, make, and dispose model, right? And we are talking about uh, an economy which basically restores and regenerates our environment and our economic system. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's about system-wide innovation. And what we, when we mean system-wide innovation, we mean starting from a very small unit, maybe at the family level, and going to a global level. So we have to think about that we have to become more circular and meaning that designing the waste out. So we are talking about a waste-free society. Right? And of course, I mean, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the underpinned, it's underpinned by the transition to, to renewable energy. And ultimately, we want to basically go towards you know, economic, natural, and social capital building. So that's the idea with this. Now, if we look at quickly pay an attention to what does this really mean in the, in the context of our industrial systems. Well, this is a diagram that has been brought forward by, by one of the uh, proponents, uh, or let's say strong proponents of circular economy, the MacArthur Foundation in, in UK. Uh, and what we, we see is that on the, on the, on the right side, we have, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sort of, a sort of picture of our industrial uh, system if we basically try to uh, close the loops of our environment or of our system. Uh, industrial system. And what we see is on the, on the right side, it's basically the technical sphere. And on the left side, it's the biosphere. And our lives, for example, socioeconomic life today or industrial life today is actually a combination of the two, right? And what we would like to see is basically that in the, in the technical sphere, we could basically loop the resources as much as possible, right? Smaller the loop and longer we stay there, beneficial it is for the for the for the for the sustainability and that's what we need to do uh, and this will be done basically by you know rethinking the whole system right the, the the industrial system and consequently the economic system as well and the ultimate objective basically is to to minimize the leakage out of the system so we would basically convert our so-called waste today into a complete value for the for the society. Uh, in a simpler term, and 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 let's say mapping it uh, over this over the same system, uh, industrial system, or let's say manufacturing system I showed you earlier. So what we mean here is that we would like to basically go back on several different stages with the resource flows, right? Uh, but obviously, if we want to let's say reuse, remanufacture, recycle, for example. Uh, so we cannot do it with the waste. So we have to bring forward a new kind of, you know, product design approach. So we need to design products which basically are, you know, manufactured for that purpose. So it's not possible that we design products for, for disposal and then we try to bring them back into the system to add value. So, but then, I mean, it's, it, it won't work. I mean, if, for example, just working on this part because we have to create a new value proposition for the for the for the for the for, for us as consumers or as users right so what we are saying is that the in business business models of today need to be innovated all right and of course i mean taking the advantage of today's for example uh, um, 
uh, IT systems, for example, information technology, we need to basically manage the flows of the materials and information in a more, in a, in a smarter way. So we have the possibility to do that. Right? Now, the question is that talking about this might seem simple, but but we should ask ourselves, are there any, does it work? Are there any examples? Yes, there are, actually. There are several examples. One of them is basically this one, Renault, you know, one of the biggest automotive manufacturers. Well, they are basically, you know, doing what we call remanufacturing with 30 to 50 percent less expensive components. So they bring back their, their, their used cars and, and they try to regenerate uh, the, the value out of that 100 million euro business and which is a profitable business right it's not a but for me the most important part is actually here i mean this of course the economic part is the driver right but the sustainability gets embedded in this whole idea so you basically go down you know in the in the in the wastage of everything so this is ec extremely important well another another interesting example is this another uh, uh, leader in the in the in this um, area of uh, um, uh, documentation and 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 uh, communication uh, when it comes to printing well it's a it's a 11 billion technology leader uh, in the industry and we see that they are 94 percent today total reuse and recycle and zero waste in the landfills and this is a, uh, we all know that this Xerox is a, is, a, is a thriving business, all right? And the interesting part is this here. Well, we see that reduction in water usage, green has, gr greenhouse gas emission, and energy levels are also going down. So this is interesting to, to basically look at it. But as I said, there are several examples like that. But the interesting thing is that all those examples at the global level would still fit on a list of A4 page, all right? So the reason obviously is that because we are basically talking about you know, small pockets and that is not how the change will happen. We need a system level change. And that's actually the, the whole idea behind this uh, circular economy thinking. So uh, if we look at, for example, the figures, um, Alan MacArthur Foundation did a study with, with McKinsey and they came out with the initial figure this is a trillion dollar opportunity from the economic point of view. Uh, later on in an extended study they said well this could be you know in, a, in an ideal case scenario it could be 4.5 up to 4.5 trillion dollar with the, with, the, with the World Business Council uh, on Sustainable Development. A Swedish study done in, in, in 2015 for example, it's a Swedish case study where the, where, where the uh, um, researchers have done some simulation. Well, we could basically s go down in 70% less carbon emissions and, and additional jobs with much better uh, GDP. Uh, so, 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 the, so, I mean, uh, it's very clear that, that there is a great potential in, in going in, in, in this direction. So, well, the, the point here is that, uh, as I said, we have the possibility, but the question is that, I mean, we see the models working as well, right? But the question is, is it, is it scalable? Well, of course, the, with the mindset that we get from, from, from a linear paradigm, well, we, we see that the notion is resources are infinite and natural capital or environmental impact is not part of the equation there, right? Uh, but, of course, we can change. Uh, what we need to change is, as I said, value proposition, how we basically offer the value in the product to the users and the consumers. So it's not the product that consumers or users are after. It's the service that basically that product is providing them. So we need to change that value proposition. Infrastructure, well, reverse flows are not an easy way out with, the, with this linear mindset, right? We need to have a very effective, very efficient infrastructure for reverse flows. Uh, well, as I said, system approach, we have to basically create a system approach where we, where we see that different systems at different levels are collaborating with each other. Otherwise, the, the, the effect will not be, not be going forward. And as I said, Information and communication technologies of the modern time are fantastic enabler to that. We have the possibility to trace the information down to, you know, nano, micro level now, right? 
and that's fantastic well i mean as i said we need we, we, yes we need to change what do we need to change for example in the context of this manufacturing systems that we have been working with well these are the the the, the factors or let's say the areas where we think uh, it need, change needs to happen and we call it some kind of bottom up change right and bottom up change means that the businesses have to take the lead and go from from bottom towards the the higher level goals and the higher level goals does not mean just for example thinking about in a philanthropic way about sustainability it's about business as well right so value models we need to change uh, design we need to change supply chains as i said there's lot we only know the forward flows we do not know the reverse flows today ICT in structure is 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 is, is an enabler, and we need to we need to use it in a smarter way. Uh, technologies, of course, there I do not see any problem if we, for example, can think about the other parts and organizational structure. We, our organizations are too rigid today. It is basically a very important part of the mindset. And if we want to go further you know so we have been seeing i mean it's it's been it's been long time under the under the sustainability paradigm for example policies and regulations have been pushing you know this this change but we don't see this happening in the in the in the way that we want want it to want it with with the speed that we we need all right uh, but of course i mean it's not just the policies because policies are more like like a push and with the bottom up approach we will create a pull as well and it's a, it's a, it's a it's a two way system that we need to work on financing models need to change uh, we need to change as as people i mean the lifestyle that we have today is uh, is with the mindset of you know yeah we can you know uh, scrap anything at any time and just you know make it part of the waste it's not a problem but that's not, that will not be the case if we are talking about you know uh, 2050 and uh, 9 billion of population so that is not a uh, way of uh, way of living and of course i mean as we all understand and agree that everything happens here right and uh, education and of course uh, research based education in this area is an extremely important uh, let's say a driver for for this change so both a bottom up and top down so they have to meet with each other if we want to uh, make this change happen well what is kth doing for example kth is actually contributing in this change so uh, last year uh, kth actually uh, with the with the initiative from uh, four la larger schools uh, with itm leading that uh, has actually initiated a uh, Uh, uh this circular economy at kth and uh, the main aim of this is basically to to move towards circular industrial systems through education and research and the idea of course is to basically bring those uh, bring these all this new um uh, but let's say uh, ideas on 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 the on the industrial systems into the Uh, education of of the future uh, generations and of course uh, run research projects and and try to create new knowledge around that and of course we also mean to basically uh, develop a platform where we can you know collaborate on these ideas with the industry with research institutes other academic partners uh, nationally and internationally policy makers and of course the society i mean the, we as we are sitting here today so we think that uh, you this is just a, a beginning of the of the of the new future and the kth is part of that uh, change so we are hopeful thank you very much for listening